This past week was CES, and at the very end of it, a little bit of interesting news that came out is that the lead developer for Videoland announced they wanted to bring the media app VLC to PS4, Roku, and most interestingly, the Switch. Before we talk about what this could mean for the Switch potentially, first I realized that some of you guys don't actually know what VLC is. Clearly, you did not pirate anime in the mid-2000s. I guess you always do what your big sister tells you to do. Okay. <laughs> Later. Well, what VLC is, it's a media app available on Mac, PC, iOS, Android, and even Xbox One. And the main point of it is that it's a media app that supports a very large array of different video formats, way more than any kind of stock media app would on your OS. Now, how this news actually came about is during the end of CES, during some interviews, the lead developer for Videoland, the company that makes VLC, mentioned some of their planned upcoming updates, including the ability to use AirPlay on their Android version of the app and have actual native VR support for video. Video, but the more interesting thing was sort of a side note he dropped about their interest in bringing it to more platforms, including the Switch. And why this is especially interesting to the Switch is because, as we all kind of know, something that that platform is very weak on right now is media options. We've brought up various times before that there's a lot of really popular streaming app options that are not actually on the Switch yet, but are available basically everywhere else. The only thing it only has at the moment is Hulu and YouTube. We don't even have Netflix yet, which is, you know, one of the biggest streaming options out there. So the idea of having something like VLC on the Switch is very interesting, because unlike more traditional streaming options, that actually opens up a whole new room of possibilities on the Switch. Because we're not just talking about being part of a membership or service that gives you access to specific content, but it actually gives you a way to intentionally load content to your Switch directly, either by loading something on an SD card or potentially by streaming it from some kind of media server. This would greatly tap into some potential that the Switch has to be something much more than a gaming tablet. The only shame is, it's probably not gonna happen. In the past, we've looked at a lot of weird workarounds to show what the Switch is capable of that Nintendo is currently limiting, doing things like being able to access an internet browser, use YouTube before YouTube app was actually released, and even went so far as to actually order an Uber with one. And it looks like he's gonna be here really quick, actually. It says two minutes now, but they're already turning on the street. I think that's him. Is that a, that's what a Ford Fusion looks like, right? But an important difference between all those different applications we've talked about before is that those are all very specific things in mind. Streaming apps, services, things that are designed to do a specific task. Whereas something like VLC opens up a little too much of the Switch in a way that I think Nintendo is not really comfortable with. They've made it a point in the past with previous systems, and especially with the Switch, to really focus on the idea that this is a gaming handheld, not a tablet. Despite what it is capable of, despite what kind of potential it could have, at the end of the day, Nintendo wants to market this as a way to play the newest Mario game, not a way to order a car. Part of this comes down to Nintendo's dedication to preserve what they see as their image, which they have relented on a little bit with the Switch. We are seeing a lot more M-rated content, third-party games, and just more adult-oriented stuff in general with the Switch as opposed to the usual very kid-focused approach. But at the same time, Nintendo still wants to have that limitation of these are the brands and things that represent us. We don't want anything that gives people full control over what kind of content is available on the system. Another reason that's kind of tied into that as well, and similar but different, is also Nintendo's immense paranoia about piracy. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that not allowing VLC is not going to allow piracy to happen. There's already been all kinds of homebrew stuff opened up on the Switch. It's just going to happen no matter what Nintendo tries to do. But that doesn't change the fact that they have this intense belief that they have ways of preventing further piracy, and that includes making sure that there is very strict control over what kind of applications are available on the Switch. And honestly, I just think this is all kind of a real shame. There's so much the Switch could do that Nintendo is just handicapping it from doing out of fear of something that would affect their image or possibly allow for more piracy, which let's face it, the piracy is just going to happen no matter what they try. But it's just this entire argument of what is the Switch meant to be? And I do agree, the Switch is a gaming handheld first and foremost, but that doesn't mean that it can't do more things as just an option. Just by adding more media streaming apps or more utility apps or more just different things that are available on most traditional tablets doesn't mean that all of a sudden Mario won't run on your Switch or that you didn't buy it for games in the first place. Yes, obviously you're not buying a Switch because you wanna have some kind of all-in-one utility device, but it wouldn't hurt to have those things available as well because it can do it.